Tonight on 2020 Worldly News, the Clarenceville Elementary Specials Team presents Curriculum Night with Mr. Altavilla harmonizing the music curriculum, Mr. Davidson illustrating the art curriculum, while Mr. French reads deep into the library curriculum, and Mrs. Frost decodes and codes the technology curriculum. And finally, Mr. Mayor throws light into the physical education curriculum. Good evening, and welcome to 2020 Worldly News. Today's top story, specials curriculum night at Botsford and Grandview Elementary. But first, the burning question going through everybody's mind right now. Yes, this is a dabbing unicorn tie. First up, Mr. Altavilla on music. Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Altavilla. If you've ever heard the name Mr. A or your kids talking about that, well, that's me. And I'm the music teacher of both Bosford and Grandview Elementary. I'm sitting here in the Grandview Elementary room to give you a little tour of what we're going to do and, and what the curriculum will be like this year. First of all, we get to share instruments this year. Last year, we were not allowed to share the instruments. This year, we are going to take full advantage of that. Another thing that we're going to get to do is we are going to get to share the music books. So I will show that to you. There is one for each grade. And inside these books, there's all kinds of songs and there's poetry and there's pictures and there's all kinds of things for the kids to learn. Okay. So those are two of the things that we get to do this year that we did not get to do last year. Now, next thing I'm going to try and do is not make you dizzy. I'm going to take you a little tour of the room. Now, I'm at Grandview. Understand that the room at Botsford is very similar. It's a little smaller, but it has basically the same type of setup. Okay? So here we go. All right. Let's walk around the room a little bit. Okay? As we go around here, you will notice, ah, uh, yes, I still use an old-fashioned stereo. And I use CDs, and I use the radio, I use all kinds of stuff there, okay? Moving around over to here, I have the magic closet. No, this does not lead to Narnia. It leads to more instruments, okay? As we walk around the room, you will see the music stands for band, and we'll talk about that later. My word wall is up there. If you recall, talked about sharing instruments. Well. Take a look at this. I have plenty of instruments to share. Okay, these are the xylophones that we use on a regular basis. Okay. Now, remember I said that we have books for all the kids? Well, there they are, color-coded by grade, fifth, fourth, third, second. Kindergarten and first grade does not have a book, but we do have many other things that we use with them. I have all kinds of movies and DVDs, and yes, I still use DVDs, okay? And there's a million kid CDs that I use right there with them. All right, moving around the room. You can see the piano has now turned into a sanitizing station where everybody gets to clean their hands as often as they wish. As we move more and more around the room, you can see my instruments on the wall. Okay, you can also see that occasionally I go in the Wayback Machine and I play them albums. Yes, I still have a turntable. All right, and one of the other things we do is I use the computer and we play a lot of videos. Up here, I don't know if you can still see it because it's hard to see when you got this going, but we use the smart board quite a bit too. All right, so let me talk to you about a few things. Okay, hopefully you didn't get too dizzy with me wandering around the room. Okay, now, first of all, for fourth and fifth grade, 
they have a couple of special things going on. For fourth and fifth, we have choir. Choir has already started. That is a special group that meets once a week during their lunch recess. They come down to see me. They sit socially distanced with their masks on, and we learn songs outside of the regular school day. They will also be part of a concert that is scheduled for December 8th. It's kind of a get together. We sing a few songs and we sing some Christmas songs, Frosty the Snowman, that kind of stuff. It's a quick sing along, quick fun thing. And you go home and have ice cream. It's a lot of fun. Also, if we get to do it, we have the big concert at the end of the year in May. They will be the featured group at the end. For band, we have been told that in January, there's a possibility that they will get to do band, which is flute, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, and drums. Now, this is a voluntary group. Not everyone has to do this because it does cost money. You have to attain an instrument. But in order for us to do that, something has to go away. These have to go away before band can happen. So with your fingers crossed and your toes crossed and everyone wishing best wishes, maybe we can get rid of the masks and we can actually have band for the first time in a long time here at Grandview and Bostwood Elementary Schools. Now, as far as kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, as far as general music goes, which is 90% of my day, we will be spending it as much as possible having fun, doing music and movement, playing the instruments as much as possible, singing, dancing, watching videos, introducing new recording artists, and introducing them to people who have been gone a very long time, like Mozart and Beethoven and Haydn and Tchaikovsky. We have certain traditions we do. We will probably, if I can find it, because things get lost over the years, uh, we always do the Nutcracker every year. We also have some other videos that we play every year. It should be a fun and exciting year. We're gonna do the best we can to cram it full of as much fun and information and learning as we possibly can. Now, as far as report cards go, yes, your child will get a grade for this class. Now, it is a standards-based report card, which means they cannot get the highest grade possible until all those standards have been met. Now, in the music class, I do not just do a unit and then abandon it. It's not like I'm gonna do instruments for three weeks and then we never do them again. We're gonna do instruments throughout the year. I don't just do the books and then abandon them. We're gonna do the books throughout the year. So the first few quarters, or first semester at least, uh, when you get your report card, it's going to look like everyone is being very, very average. They're gonna get a two. Why are they gonna get a two? Because we haven't done everything yet. That means that they are on their way and they are learning and they are exactly where they are supposed to be. All right, it's been nice getting a chance to talk to you. I'm easy to get a hold of. You can call the school. My email is on the website. Please feel, feel free to contact me anytime you need to. Hope to see you soon. Take care. And now, Mr. Davidson with Art Curriculum. Hello, parents and families of Botsford and Grandview Elementary. My name is Mr. Davidson and I am the art teacher at both of our elementary schools. And the point that I want to get across as we explain what we do in art is that my room is a judgment-free zone. Uh, we are not here to uh, do anything negative in terms of art. Uh, I encourage exploration of art. I encourage students to be creative and use that imagination that they are gifted with. Uh, and, and I have a phrase that I like to use, and that is, there is no such thing as bad art. And that's very true, and I remind the students of that all the time. Uh, you can spill paint on a floor, and it's considered art. So there's no such thing as bad art. Uh, also in my classroom, we try to build that self-esteem with positive uh, experiences. One of the big things I've been working on this year is be nice. And I tell the students all the time, be nice to yourself. Don't quit on yourself. The only way you can do bad in art is to quit on yourself and stop trying. I also say be nice to our tables, be nice to our supplies, be nice to those around you, even if they're not next to you. So through those opportunities, I like to build a positive environment, welcoming the students in, 
uh, greeting them and, and saying goodbye to them as they leave and being that positive person to help them out throughout the, the school, whether they're actually in my room or not. Uh, inside the art room, uh, as a former classroom teacher, uh, I like to bring uh, that side into it. The art projects that we do are projects that are uh, not only beneficial that I feel here in the art room in terms of learning and exploring uh, art, but also beneficial in their regular classroom as well when they go back to their classroom teachers. Uh, so we might do projects that involve protractors or rulers or compasses. Um, with the little kids, we do projects that involve scissors, how to hold a pair of scissors. Some of the kindergartners are still learning how, how to do that. Uh, learning how to hold a pencil or hold crayons as our little kids are still learning how to do those sort of things. So I like to give them opportunities to explore um, with those items uh, so that they're not uh, pressured to that they have to perform so much or that they have to do something a certain way. Uh, and, and I give them a variety of opportunities uh, in, with different supplies. Obviously we do a lot of things, you know, with scissors and glue. We'll cut, we'll create. Uh, we'll also use things like pastel crayons, which is something students don't really get a chance to use a lot of. So we come in here, we learn how to use those things. Also chalks, uh, obviously paints, painting theories like with primary colors. Uh, we bring a lot of visuals into the art room as well. Um, also, I like to uh, play music, instrumental music in the background so that they're getting art through their ears, through their eyes, through their touch, through their senses. Uh, so that they can see that art is all around them uh, and that it is something that, you know, even if they uh, think that they're not good at, they are. Um, everybody's good at art. Everybody can draw. Uh, that's the biggest thing. I get a lot of kids like, oh, I can't, I can't draw. I don't know how to draw. Yes, you do. We take it piece by piece. We draw something. We pay attention to where it is. Um, so I make that environment as po as positive and as friendly as they can so that they can enjoy when they're the time that they're here uh, So that they can just learn and and get that creative flow going so that they can maybe use something like that in their uh, In their classroom or outside of school Maybe I can do a project that inspires them to pick up a different hobby uh, That that they would like artistic wise uh, tell them uh, how art uh, is all around them uh, by doing different projects in classroom things, by doing full school-wide projects, like fifth grade does a fifth grade project at the end of every year, special just to them. Uh, so in closing, I, I just like to say thank you for all of the support of sending your kids in, uh, following up, like last year when we were virtual, doing the art uh, on the Google Classroom was great. Uh, I enjoy having your kids in my room. Uh, it's something positive, something lighter for them. I'm not quizzing them, I'm not giving them you know, reports to write. This is something they can come in and uh, still following classroom rules and expectations, but it's a lighter fare. Uh, it's something that they can just kind of enjoy and, and, and create. Uh, take it home, be proud of it. I always tell them, take it home, hang it on the fridge, give it to your grandma. Grandmas love to hang their projects up on fridges. So be proud of your artwork. Uh, don't quit on yourself. Uh, be nice and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, in closing, thank you again. Uh, I appreciate all the support coming in from parents and, and things. I know some parents have brought in supplies that they have extra art, egg cartons, cardboard, things like that are always great. Uh, I have kids, you know, bringing in their drawings that they've done at home, which is great. I like to hang those up uh, here in the art rooms that we have. Uh, so take care, everyone. Uh, we'll have weekly assignments, you know, or projects, I should say. Assignments is more of a classroom word. Uh, we'll have those regular projects going on, some one week long, some two weeks long. We'll try to have holiday themed ones when holidays are coming up. Uh, and other than that, I, I enjoy having your kids here and I look forward to seeing them every week. Uh, I love the fist bumps and the air fist bumps now because we're not supposed to, you know, come in contact as much, but we do all what we can and we have a lot of fun. So thank you all. Uh, and now on to Mr. French. Here's Mr. French with library curriculum. Hi, I'm Mr. French. I'm an elementary school librarian. I work at both Grandview and Botsford Elementary Schools. The most important part of my job, I feel, is to foster the love of reading for your students, as well as support the literature program in their classroom. So when students come to the library, they get a chance to check out books. 
both libraries are well stocked with many great books for them to choose from. They get to check out those books, take them back to their classroom and read them, and even take them home and enjoy them. But of course they need to remember to bring them back to school. Anytime students and classes come to the library, I feel it's crucial for me to do some reading with them. So they practice their good listening skills when they come to see me. We read some really great books. Reading to students is so important. <clears throat> students are able to hear language. They understand the author's craft of writing and listening to that language and hearing those stories helps make them better readers and better writers as well as better speakers. For the younger students, we practice being five-star listeners. Ask your students in grades kindergarten, first and second what it means to be a five-star listener. When children come to our library, we work on being nice and polite, being kind and respectful, respectful to the library as well as to each other, and we work on being safe and healthy as well. <clears throat> I give the students opportunities to check out books, usually towards the end of class period. I begin my class period with a question of the day and with a mood meter check-in. We also have some sort of mini lesson that helps us with our library skills, and of course we read. In the lower grades, kindergarten through second, I read a lot of picture books, both fiction and nonfiction. In the upper grades, we read chapter books, third, fourth, and fifth grade. We work on a chapter book that takes us several weeks to complete. We talk about the story and make as many connections to it as we can. Right now, we're having students check out just one book. We're all getting back into the swing of things and getting used to what it means to be in school and be in library and go to our specials. So just one book is good for right now. Do remind your students of their library day and, remember, and have them remember to bring their library books back so that they can check out another one. If they forget, they won't get to check out another one until they bring that book back. Sometimes books get lost or damaged. If this happens, you'll get a little report home that shows what book has been lost or damaged and how much it costs. It'd be great if you could replace that book or send in the money to uh, pay for whatever loss or damage has happened. Prior to the pandemic, we had some books checked out and many students had those books out and they didn't bring them back because they couldn't. Well, now that we're back open and having library again, it'd be great if we could find those books. They might be hiding under a bed or behind a dresser or somewhere. See if we can find those and bring them back in and get them back into the library. But students will not be penalized for those books that are, have been out during the pandemic. We also have a couple of book fairs each year. We do have some book fairs coming up this fall, uh, right around the beginning of November, which I hope you'll support. Uh, and support your students by sending in a few bucks for them to be able to buy some great uh, books that they get to keep for themselves. Also, we can always use some help. So if you'd like to volunteer at the book fair, please let the school know or let the PTO or FOG know that you would like to do so. Thank you very much for sending your students to us and trusting them with us as we work hard to try to work with them and help them be better, more well-rounded students. Next up, Mrs. Frost with Technology Curriculum. Okay, let's talk about technology class. Um, I'm gonna share some of the main topics that we cover throughout the year with you. Um, all of these fall under either the Michigan Computer Science Standards or the National Educational Technology Standards. So the first of those topics is computing systems, and this is just kind of your general um, operations and navigating computers. So in K-1 we have iPads and in second through fifth grade we use Chromebooks primarily. Um, so the topics kind of that fall under this would be your keyboarding skills, mouse skills, especially those Chromebook trackpads, um, hardware versus software. We talk about um, the universal technology symbols, hoping that kids will be able to navigate any device that they come across, um, especially down the road as things change. Um, troubleshooting independently, and we get into some design projects. So that might just be, um, you know, the qualities of good slideshow presentation design, um, all the way into green screen photos and some digital movies. Our next very important topic is digital citizenship. And um, a lot of these are some standalone best lessons. They're based on Common Sense Media's curriculum. Um, all of the grade levels get 
um, different lessons based on media balance, privacy and security, and digital footprint, um, meaning everything you leave behind on the internet. And then beginning in third grade, and every year from there, students get lessons on cyberbullying and digital drama, as well as news and media literacy. And that news and media literacy is one that is really embedded throughout the year as students do research too. One of my passion areas is robotics and coding. So I'm always very excited when we get to these subjects in our classes. Um, we have a really nice scaffolded approach. We have BBOTs for some of our youngest students, which are really simple programming with arrow buttons, all the way up to Ozobots, which can be programmed um, with markers on paper and different color combinations as well as block-based code on a computer that the robots can connect to. So we have a nice um, kind of gradual approach there for all of the grade levels. Um, and then in terms of coding, our students experience block-based programming challenges um, pretty much in first through fifth grade where they're dragging blocks and learning about um, giving instructions to a computer. And then as they get a little bit older, they kind of start from scratch and create their own um, animations or simple games using block-based code. Um, the final kind of category that we cover in technology is STEM and makerspace. And so this is where um, our time will be spent off of the Chromebooks or iPads and using some other materials. So um, in our youngest grades, students will do things like storybook STEM, um, where we read a picture book and then they solve a design challenge based on that. Um, and we have a variety of materials like recycled materials. We have strawbies, which are connectors. Um, we have cardboard connectors so they can build things out of cardboard. Um, and then the same goes for real world STEM. As they get a little bit older, we integrate some of the science standards and um, work on some real world design challenges. And really overall, the goal here is to engage kids in the cycle of the engineering design process. So that is all I have for you. We are off to a great start. Um, we have some new tools that are really helping our students this year. Um, I'm always available if you have questions about our class or just some technology questions in general. And thank you for watching. Good evening, students, parents, and guardians. I'm Mr. Mayor, your child's physical education teacher at both Botsford and Grandview Elementary. Tonight, I take you through the physical education curriculum, kindergarten through fifth grade. By now, your child has received a Bring Your Boom Mr. Mayor's Physical Education sticker that has a QR code. To access Mr. Mayor's Phys Ed page .com, you can simply scan the QR code with your camera on your tablet or phone, or simply type in Mr. Mayor's Phys Ed page .com into your browser. Welcome to Mr. Mayor's Phys Ed page .com, your one-stop shop for everything physical education curriculum here at Grandview and Botsford Elementary. As you see, there's a bunch of tabs you can click on. Here's our health and fitness routines. We do the five-minute jog. We have the five-minute jump rope. We do form running, dynamic stretching. Our stretches and exercises, exercises include grade-level sight words, and mostly we do skip counting as we practice our stretches and exercises. To keep track of your fitness progression, there's a fitness progression calendar included here at the website. And lessons on nutrition, finding food groups, macronutrients, and meal planning here. For motor skill development, here are the third through fifth grade lessons. Here's an example on volleyball skills where you can check out third through fifth grade I can statements, the things that we were trying for them to achieve. And this will all include written instructions as well as video instructions. Here's another example of a unit on soccer skills where you'll see I can statements for third through fifth and some videos on how to do the proper form and technique for a lot of skills. Here's your kindergarten through second grade curriculum. Throwing and catching example here with overhand throw, we do catching instructions, underhand throw, we even do throwing a disc. Another example would be on basketball skills, where you can see all the I can statements for first through second grade and some videos on how to do ball handling and dribbling and such. For more information for aspiring athletes that want to continue their athletic career, you can click on different 
aspects of sports. Like here's the history of volleyball, all the rules to play volleyball, and included will be written instructions as well as some video instructions as well. Here's another example of a sports unit that we do in basketball. I know there are a lot of aspiring basketball players here at Clarenceville. So here's all the rules, correct shooting form, hand dribbling tips, and some great stuff on basketball. There are several different sports units that you can look at as well. But what really makes for a successful physical education class is the way we treat one another, where we have great sportsmanship. You can click on their sportsmanship tab and our moral focus tab. I try to include moral character quotes and reflection questions each week. Now, these moral character quotes are usually on wisdom, respect, gratitude, self-control, um, integrity, gratitude, perseverance, and we usually discuss some of these quotes at the end of our class while we sit in the center circle. We also discuss good news. This helps me get to know your student better and build great relationships. But what I ultimately want for your student is for them to bring their boom, their brilliant, original, optimistic me. That's the acronym that I am trying to instill in your children. Brilliant because all of our students at Clarenceville are brilliant and original. There's no one like them. Everybody has their strengths and everybody has their challenges. So be optimistic. Look on the bright side of things. Know your limitations, know your strengths, but don't let them get you down. So be optimistic when approaching any goal, whether it's in physical education or in life. So I have a whole bring your boom philosophy here on this page in the moral character uh, pledge. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Well, that's it for 2020's Worldly News on Specials Curriculum. Yours and kindness health and physical education. I'm Mr. Mayor. Stay fit, friends. Music